Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship you have given to us. We thank you for making it possible for us to come together, to sing praises to you, to remember your grace and goodness, to upward the throne of grace, to look to the beauty of your holiness, and to seek for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that I will minister to each one of us and according to our needs, and that you will expand your word with the help of the Holy Spirit, that you will open the eyes of our understanding, that we may see the hidden truths in your word, that we may know the certainties that we have provided in your word, that we may know the experience you have given to us, that we may know the truth that we have revealed to us, that we may know the glory that we have promised to us. Lord, this today we want to thank you and praise you, and we want to seek for the Holy Spirit to teach us right now, and that we may know the truth for sure, and may cultivate deep biblical convictions, and uh, that will see us through throughout the life until you return, or until we leave this world, that we may know the truth that we have committed to our trust. Oh Lord, we thank you and praise you for the blessings you have given to us, for the way you have been taking care of us and uh, providing for all the needs and also keeping us safe and secure in your mighty hands. We thank you and praise you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we read from 1 John chapter 5 from verse 11 to verse 13. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, 12, and 13. And this is a testimony God has given us, eternal life, and this life is in his son. He who does not have the son, he does not have, he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. I read from New Living Translation. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. So whoever has God's son has life. Whoever does not have his son does not have life. I write this to you who believe in the son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. King James Version. And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that had the son had life, and he that has not the son of God has not life. There these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. <clears throat> now today, the 36th session on this first letter of John that we have been meditating word by word. And uh, as he comes to the close of this letter, Apostle John is bringing uh, Christian certainties. There are five Christian certainties that he mentions in the closing verses uh, uh, from verse 11 to verse 23. And uh, seven times he repeats the word that you may know. That you may know. So it is very important for us to know what God has promised to us, what God has given to us when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This helps us not only to be sure of what we believe and to have deep biblical convictions and also to help us to share the gospel with others with courage and confidence. Just yesterday I had visited a Muslim contact. I have been visiting for many months. And uh, this past few months, I could not see him due to the lockdown in Mumbai. So I went and spent a long time with him, talking to him about this truth, about eternal life. I asked him, what, what do your scriptures say about love and eternal life? So he had no proper answer. 
And uh, I told him about these things that uh, the Bible speaks very certainly about the eternal life that we have by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Only by faith in him. No religious rituals are involved in getting the eternal life. And that you don't have to have any doubts uh, uh, before you leave this world where you go, whether God will accept you, whether God will forgive you or what. So this is what many people believe in the world, that they are not sure of what happens to them after they leave this world, where they will be going. It is all left to their destiny or to their fate as they believe, to their karma. But the Bible gives us very certain things and gives us the guarantee of what God has promised us. Here is the very testimony of God. God is giving a record about his son himself. It is not some kind of mythological story that people have written. And the man was asking me yesterday, who has written the Bible? I explained to him right from the Genesis about the Old Testament, about the New Testament, and uh, how the word of God has come by inspiration of God spoke to the people to write his word. And so we have such confidence in the scriptures and therefore, of course, I mean, in Jude, verse 3, we read that defend the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And the body of faith, the body of truth, once for all delivered. There is no more addition and there is no more coming, new things coming. And you have to defend it, hold on to it. And you have to proclaim it and you have to uh, have deep convictions on the truth that has been revealed in the word of God. You know, Today, we have many Christians who are not sure of what they believe. It is all to do with the religious traditions they have uh, uh, received from their ancestors, from their forefathers. They are simply following the traditions and uh, they are part of the community for social needs. So very few have the deep biblical convictions and knowing what they believe is true and that this certainty is very important. So Apostle John gives us in the closing verses five certainties, Christian certainties that we may know. And today we see the first, uh, the certainty about uh, the eternal life. In verse 11, he says that God has given us this testimony about his son, that those who believe in the name of the son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, they have eternal life. That he has already given us eternal life. It is not something that we are going to uh, expect in the future or after death. He has already given us eternal life. And that is what he says. And because that life is in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So eternal life is not something concerned with the period of time. It is not to do with the quantity, though. It is eternal. It is uh, unlimited, endless life. But then it is more than that. It is to do with the quality of life. So the eternal life brings for the abundant life and the new life and uh, overflowing life, the limitless life. Uh, this is all that the Bible speaks about. And also John wrote in his gospel in, in the very chapter one, we turn to John's gospel. I want to show you some verses where he talks about this life that is already there in the sun when the Lord Jesus Christ was born. Even he, before he was born, the light, this life, the eternal life was in him, which was manifested. And so we see in God, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4, life itself was in him, and this life uh, gives light to everyone. And the, the, so we see here, the life itself was in him. So the Lord Jesus is the life itself the life of God, that when he was born into this world, he brought the eternal life to communicate with man. He brought the eternal life to be given as gift to man to those who believe in him. And so we read in verse 12 that those who believe in him, those who receive him into their life, they are given the right to become the sons of God. So they receive the gift of eternal life. It is not by any flesh or blood. It is not by the will of any man, but it is from God. So the new birth is to do with the eternal life. So when we are born again by the Holy Spirit, we are receiving the eternal life of God. The life that will last forever into eternity. And it begins right now 
when we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. It changes the quality of our life. As Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that those who are in Christ Jesus have become new creation. And all old things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So a new creation comes because of the eternal life that we, we receive from the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a person. Eternal life is a person. The Lord Jesus himself. And we see that in John chapter 3, verse 36 again. John chapter 3, verse 36. And all who believe in God's Son have eternal life. Those who don't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but the wrath of God remains upon them. So all those who believe in God's Son have eternal life. So this is something that we experience right now when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, all that Christians are doing, going to church, all the rituals, and all these are meaningless if you do not know the Son of God. If you do not believe in the Son of God, you have no life. See, so everything can happen mechanically, routinely. People are doing, going to church, praying, reading Bible and all this but without knowing the Son of God, without really believing in the Son of God, without really knowing that they have received eternal life. And now this is what we can check with the people you made. You ask them, have you received eternal life? They are not sure. They say, we don't know. Because the teaching on the eternal life is rarely hard in the churches. All that we hear often is about blessings, about healing, about prosperity, about... Uh, and miracles, all these kind of things people are talking nowadays, and people want to hear these things. But the real truth has to be proclaimed that is eternal life. The Son of God has brought, He Himself is alive, and those who believe in Him have received eternal life. We also see in John chapter 10, verse 28, the Lord Jesus said that I have come to give life and to give it more abundantly, the sheep may have abundant life. And so this abundant life is given by the Son of God. It's part of the eternal life. Once we believe in the Lord Jesus, we receive the abundant life. And if Apostle Paul also said in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 3 onwards, he, he said that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. With all spiritual blessings. And he lists all. 10 blessings from verse 3 to verse 14 in chapter 1 of Ephesians. He, God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter writes saying that God has given us all that we need for life and godliness. He has already given us all that we need to live in this world and to live godly life. And so... Many times people are begging for God's blessing that you give us this, you bless us, you bless us. But the Bible says he has already blessed you. Once you believe in the Son of God, you have received the eternal life. And the eternal life has everything. And that's why Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that God is able to give you exceeding abundantly more than all you ask or even imagine. So God is able to do exceeding abundantly. He's using two superlative words in English. Exceeding and abundantly. More than you ask or even imagine. More than you think about. Because God knows our needs and before we could ask him. And he has his own time. And he's able to provide. In Philippines chapter 4 verse 19, Apostle Paul said that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. All your needs he's able to supply. These promises are already there in the scriptures. But some false prophet will come along and say, God is going to fill your bank account with lots of cash by next week. And many people are ready to believe all such kind of nonsense. On Facebook, I am reading all this, and immediately I read their comments saying, stop this false fortune telling. The word of God says you do not know what happens tomorrow, 
and you first promise for promising by next week and uh, my bank balance will be filled with the loads of cash from where the cash will come whether the rbi will allow the cash to flow into my bank account see all this kind of nonsense many many so called false prophets are you know talking about and many people like such kind of posts on facebook and many christians want to hear such kind of nonsense all the time but when you teach the word of god as it is many don't like it is boring to them you know god's word has given us already so many promises he is able to supply to meet all our needs and apostle paul being in the roman prison said that he has everything he you know he has everything sufficient and full he was content with the life he was he has in the jail what kind of a man he was in jail he was content he said i have everything i need you know it all depends on the mindset we have the greedy people can never be satisfied how much god is blessing and giving we still try to blame god and complain and grumble because if we are greedy looking you know looking for many things to come our way easily then we can never be satisfied god can never satisfy us bible says he is able to supply to meet all our needs he knows our needs even before we ask and so we see that we need to receive the life of his son and that's what god wants us to receive the eternal life and also in john chapter 17 the lord jesus was praying like this he says that when jesus had finished saying all these things he looked up to heaven and said father the time has come glorify your son so that he can glorify back to you so that he can give glory back to you for you have given him authority over everyone in all the earth he gives eternal life to each one you have given him and this is the way to have eternal life to know you the only true god on jesus christ the one you sent to earth now the lord jesus is praying to the father saying that uh, you have given me authority to give eternal life to all those you have given to me now the lord jesus christ has come to give eternal life to all who come to him and father draws people to his son to receive eternal life in his son This is a beautiful prayer in John chapter 17. He says the eternal life is knowing the only true God and his son the Lord Jesus Christ. When you know the Lord Jesus Christ you have received eternal life. The life that is totally different from the life that the people in the world are enjoying and the pleasures of sin. They think that is all that is there in life. that they want to enjoy the materialistic world temporary passing world as john writes in his uh, first john chapter 5 he writes that uh, in chapter 2 was 15 to 17 he said that the, all that is in the world is lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and this is not from the father this is from the world it will pass away and people are enjoying all these temporary things not knowing that there is eternal life far superior better than this life that the world is offering us today and that life eternal life is in his son and that's why we see at so many places john has written in his letter in his gospel about the eternal life the eternal life that is in his son and that's what the bible says and he comes back to it when we come back to his letter he says verse 12 he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life the lord jesus himself is life that we have read and so when we receive the lord jesus christ we have the real life otherwise we are all dead in our sins and trespasses in ephesians chapter 2 apostle paul said we are all dead in our sins and trespasses he made us alive we have been made alive in christ jesus and we have been lifted up we have been made to be seated in heavenly places all this is done by the life of the lord jesus christ 
we have been made alive by the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we receive the Lord Jesus into our life, we receive the life, the new life, that we rise from the deadness of our sins and trespasses. So people in the world are spiritually dead. They have no real life. Though they are existing physically to enjoy this world of sin, but they don't have real life that God has promised to give those who believe in him. So God has a better life. The life that he has given originally to Adam and Eve, which they have lost by committing sin, by disobedience. Today, when people disobey, rebel against God, they are lost, they are fallen, and they are dead in their sins and trespasses. And therefore, when someone hears the gospel and turns to the Lord in repentance and receives Jesus as his personal Savior and Lord, he receives eternal life instantly. So he receives eternal life instantly. You know, we see in many churches when I have, when they went around and preached in the city, Every Sunday they come and read the book and say, I am a sinner, have mercy on me. Lord, have, have mercy on me because I am a sinner. The responsive reading. The pastor reads one line and the congregation reads another line. This goes on every Sunday after Sunday saying, God, I am a sinner, have mercy on me. This is just a routine mechanical life. And then from Monday to Saturday, they will be committing sin and living in sin. They don't know the real life of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't know the eternal life God has promised to those who come to his son. They just come on Sunday and read from the book, the Father, God have mercy on us, I am a sinner. No, this, this is what is many Christians life today, especially the big denominations. But the word of God, that's why we need to encourage them to open the Bible and read what it says clearly. Very simple. That those who believe in the son have eternal life. Why do you want to live in sin and say, Lord, have mercy on me every Sunday? God wants to set us free from the life of sin and give us eternal life. The life filled with holiness, righteousness, truth, and love. That is what Apostle John has written uh, in his first letter, all these uh, uh, chapters, as we come to the fifth chapter. So he has repeated all that, uh, the fellowship with the Lord in righteousness and truth and love. Now, this is the life that God wants to give us. Not the life of sin that we are, we all the time come and ask for his mercy because we are living in sin all the time, that we are not set free. God wants to set us free and he wants to have fellowship with us. He wants us to have fellowship with one another in righteousness, in truth and love. There is no more sin. So we don't have to live in sin. Sin don't need to keep us binding making us slaves. That's why in Romans chapter six, Paul says that reckon yourself to be dead. Every day you reckon yourself to be dead to sin and alive to righteousness. You are no longer slaves to sin. You have died, you have died and you have risen with Christ. And that's what Paul you know, explains very clearly in his letters. Even in Galatians chapter two, verse 20, Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live. He lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And so Apostle Paul considers himself to be crucified with Christ and he has risen with Christ to new life. So when we have believed in the Lord Jesus, we have, we have died to our past life and we have risen to the new life. And that is what symbolically we, we show we testify in the waters of baptism. You know, many people are not coming to this spiritual understanding, the meaning of baptism. And people take baptism for sake of church membership, for sake of marriage, and for sake of many other reasons, but not because they have repented, uh, because they have, they have died to the past life, they have been buried, and they have risen to the new life. That is the exact meaning of water baptism. And so we see how when we come to the sun, we have life inside. Otherwise, we are dead in our sins and trespasses. And every Sunday we come and say, God have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. But I am still dead in my sins. But God wants us to have life of his son. So we need to come to believe in the son to have life. And verse 13, John says, these things have I written unto you 
these things, all that he has been writing from chapter, chapter one, verse one, all that John has been writing in his letter, he says, I have written all these things to you that you believe in the Son of God. And those who believe in the Son of God may know that you have eternal life. This is very important. There are people who say we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they don't know what happened when they believe, what they received, what they experienced. They don't know. And they cannot tell others. No, this has become very traditional. You see, oh, my parents are Christian. I'm a Christian. You know, this has become a kind of, a, you know, a traditional faith that has come down from the ancestors. But what about your personal experience? And this is very important. You know, personal experience. Even in the believers assemblies also. You know, just because parents have been believers, it does not mean that you are a believer. You know, when I was young, in the assembly, the elders used to simply ask me, when are you going to take baptism? They never ask, have you accepted the Lord? Have you been born again? They just ask, when are you going to take baptism? You know, that, that was, uh, you know, something that I thought, why these people have never asked me that whether I am born again or not, whether I am saved or not. They want me to take baptism. They are only concerned about how many people they baptize because they want to post up before other people. Oh, we have baptized so many in our assembly. You know, this is not the way God wants us to do ministry or build the church. You know, in our church in Mumbai, when people come, we ask them the first question, are you born again? We give them an invitation and small piece of paper to write the details, name, address, phone number and all, and say, are you born again? Are you baptized? So this is very important. And if they are not born again, we continue to minister to them. We invite them to come and we visit them and minister to them. If they are born again, if they say they are born again, we invite them to share the testimony. We ask them to come forward and share your testimony. In the small group house meetings or on Sunday morning during the worship meeting. So this is very important for us. And later on, after making sure that they have repented really, their life is transformed and they share testimony and people can see their lifestyle, change their lifestyle, then they are prepared for the baptism. So we no need to be in a hurry to baptize people if they do not know what it is and if they have no experience of real repentance and salvation. You know, there are many pastors who are quick to say, if we go to their church two times, they will say, you take baptism. You know, this is not the way God's work is to be done. So God wants us to experience eternal life. All other things are secondary. Once you experience eternal life, it makes a difference in your life. You want to love the Lord. You become jealous to obey God's word. And you want to practice what the Lord Jesus has taught you. And what he has taught in his word. And so we see how John is giving us this Christian certainty of eternal life. We need to know that we have eternal life when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to remember to tell others about this. That if someone asks you, okay, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, why you are a Christian? Oh, my parents were Christians. We have been Christians for many generations. That is not the way. You have to give them the real reason. And that's what Peter said that, be ready to give answer to the one, anybody who asks you the reason for your hope. Tell them that Jesus has given you eternal life. Now, we have a sister in our church. She works in the municipality here in Mumbai. And all the people who are working with her are from uh, different castes and different religions, especially Buddhists. Buddhists are involved in doing this, uh, cleaning the streets at all in the municipality. And uh, our church sister has Christian name, Mary. So they asked her, how come you are a Christian and doing this work Why you are not a Buddhist? And she gives them the clear explanation of the gospel. She says that I believe in Jesus because he died for my sins, he rose again. And so she goes around telling people where she works, house to house, and she brought many people to the Lord and to the church. She witnesses during her you know, work time, working time. You see now, so confessing the truth is very important. If we experience it in our life, we have to tell people that if you believe in Jesus, you will have eternal life. And that is what Apostle John began his letter 
in chapter one, verse one, saying what we have seen, the light was manifested. We have seen, we have heard, we have touched, and we proclaim to you that you also may have fellowship with us because our fellowship is with the, with the Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the good news we need to tell people today that we have received eternal life and that those who believe in the Son will have eternal life. And this is what we see the Christian certainty, the first one that Apostle John mentions here, verse 13. And then we will see other Christian certainties in the proceeding, what is in the coming days. So we need to make sure that we have received it. And that confidence and that faith we need to have uh, uh, in our own heart, the witness of the Holy Spirit that God has given us the eternal life. And also we need to tell people that if you believe in Jesus, you will have eternal life. And those who believe in the Lord Jesus should know that they have eternal life. You know, this is the goodness we need to communicate with people today. So that Christians should know that they have eternal life if they truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All other things are not so important for us. So this is how Apostle John is coming to close this letter, talking about life in the Lord Jesus and eternal life that God has given to us in his son. May the Lord bless his word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. You have spoken to us that you have given us eternal life by faith in your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. May we know for certain the experience you have given to us, that we believe in the son and we have eternal life. How often Apostle John has repeated in his letter to make sure that we remember and that we have this deep conviction in our heart of what we have given to us by faith in Christ. Lord, help us, empower us to proclaim this good news to the people around us that if they believe in the Son, they will have eternal life. You are giving it as a free gift to, the, to all who believe in your Son. Lord, we thank and praise you for this time you have given to us to, get, to be together. I pray for everyone in the meeting that you bless them with your grace and goodness. And during these days that we may be able to exalt your name in this new year, that we may be able to bring back the glory into our lives, into our families, and into our churches. By proclaiming the truth of eternal life. May your name be glorified. Until we meet again, may your love and grace and the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we